Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Mitlighter garden. I've been doing some videos on building my first garden. And I wanted to kind of tell people what the gardening, what Mitlighter gardening is and why I think it's the best gardening method I've found that fits into my prepping. As well as just gives me a lot of good, healthy, nutritious food for just everyday use. Um, so I'll just kind of read from the book a little bit here to kind of tell you what the Mitlighter method is. It's a method that combines the best features of soil gardening and hydroponic gardening, but without all the hydroponic gardening expense. It's a complete plan. It's easy to follow. And I'll tell you, the closer I follow the plan, the better results I get. Um, so you really don't have the guesswork. So, you know, a lot of people may look at some of my gardening stuff and say, I would have done that all different. Well, I'm following the plan. This, this, uh, the tea frames and the garden bed that I'm building, that's not just off the top of my head. I'm following the established plan out of the manual step by step. Um, and to, to, so that I can get the duplicate, duplicate the results that other people like LDS prepper have, have gotten. Um, and you can do it anywhere. So yes, it's for harsh environments. It you know there are uh, successful mitlighter gardens in the middle of the desert and on the tops of mountains and just in all kinds of really bad places that have really bad soil. Um, you can do it anywhere. Um, but the method's based on a maximum utilization of space, time, and resources, and that's important. I can get as much food out of like a small 20 foot bed that's 4 foot wide as I used to be able to get out of my entire garden that was, you know, uh, probably 40 feet by 40 feet. In fact, I would get more. I got more out of three little tiny gardens last year than I used to get out of a great big garden. 12 tomato plants, 5 pepper plants, and some corn. And I had more food than I knew what to do with. Um, so. The crops are large because they are close together, and then they're nourished by supplemental feeding of mineral nutrients, kind of like you do in hydroponics, but it doesn't use any special equipment and stuff to do it. Um, and also, the Mitlighter method still gives your plants access to natural soil. Um, some plants, and, and in my case, I am planting in natural soil. Um, you don't have to have them. But uh, they're not essential to the plant's growth. But, you know, there's a little controversy over that sometimes still. The plants need anything but those essential nutrients. Um, and you can do it in either soil beds or what they call a grow box. Um, so, real quick, you know, the Mitlider method has been effective and proven. Um, in 27 different countries. I think Dr. Mitlider started this like over 50 years ago. Um, and you can see here some pictures. There's the Monument Valley, Utah, New Guinea. Um, here's a picture of um, Okinawa, Japan. Here it is in Africa. Here's one in Russia. So basically, uh, Dr. Mitlider was a missionary. He went all over the world and taught these people who were starving and, and stuff how they can grow their own food and feed themselves. That was the basis of the plan. Um, so there's always some, some common questions or maybe misconceptions that come up with Mitlighter gardening. And one of the main ones I think I hear most often is well, you're growing in sand and sawdust, and you're using a bunch of non-organic chemicals, and it's it's not organic, and it's dangerous, and it's bad. Okay, what you have to realize is that let's take nitrogen. A, when you look on the periodic table of elements, there's only one isotope. There's only one type of nitrogen. It's not like other uh, elements that have all of these different isotopes and types of it. Um, there's one. And that's the way it is for all of the essential nutrients that we add. So a plant doesn't care if it gets nitrogen from 
oil, from natural gas, from cow pee, from decomposed wood. Nitrogen is nitrogen to the plants. Okay? And really, when you go back and look at the roots of the whole organic gardening movement when it started, it was way less about the fertilizers used and mostly about the insecticides and pesticides that were put on the plants. Um, that being said, if you want to make your uh, fertilizer from an organic base, you can certainly do that. I don't worry about that. I just use the fertilizer. Um, and so that'll take us kind of into the next one, which is a mid lighter is really expensive. I mean, you have all this wood to build these grow boxes and you've got all these micronutrients. And, and I went online and looked and the micronutrients are $14 and all you get is two 10 ounce packages. I mean, and you got to put a pound of this stuff on every week. I mean, that's, that's going to cost a fortune to try to grow with that, right? And what people misunderstand is those micronutrient pack, that micronutrient pack makes a lot more fertilizer. You take and put 25 pounds of regular fertilizer. This is your NPK fertilizer. I'm using 12, 12, 12 right now because it's all I could find. Ideally, I think you want to use 16, 16, 16. Um, you take 25 pounds of that. Add four pounds of Epsom salt, then add your micronutrients. So that one pack, one 10 ounce pack, makes almost 30 pounds of fertilizer. And you get two packs. That's five gallon bucket is that it makes is more than enough for a season. Okay, so it's not all that expensive. It's actually really reasonably priced. Um, so the micronutrients are not expensive. You can make your own micronutrients. I prefer to just get them from Grow Food. Okay, this phone is annoying me. I'm going to rip the battery out. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, I prefer to just get the pack and mix them up myself. It's easy to do. GrowFood.com is a nonprofit. Um, they do a lot of good work for people all over the world. So, I buy from them. Um, the, which kind of takes us to the next thing. Well, mint lighter is destroying the soil. It's destroying the microbes and the worms because you're putting all these salts and stuff into the soil and killing everything. I can tell you my soil is just as healthy as it was. There's plenty of worms in there. Um, and they've done study after study with mint lighter that shows that, uh, the soil, the microbial effects of the soil are not affected at all. And the salt levels are actually much lower than people who use things like manure. Manure adds a lot of salts to your soil. And it will destroy your soil over time. Um, if you're putting t uh, piles of manure in there all the time. Okay. The other one is mint lighter pollutes the environment. All these, all these chemicals are running all into the rivers. There's not enough there. Right. You're putting a very small amount on each week. That the plants are using there's very little left over um, and there's less pollutants under a mint lighter garden than there typically is under a typical garden okay the other big one is you know it's not sustainable because you're using these artificial fertilizers okay well let me ask you something if you're a traditional gardening and you're using chicken poo how much chicken poo can you store and how long can you store it for before it goes bad I mean, can you keep 10 years worth of chicken poo in your shed? No, you got to go to the farmer and get some chicken poo every year. What happens if there's no chickens or you can't get to the farmer? What if you can't get any cow manure? Um, what if you had animals, but they're dead? Okay, so, yeah, technically it's not a 100% sustainable forever, but... The base materials that I make my fertilizer out of, Epsom salt, NPK fertilizer, and the micronutrients are 100% stable and they'll last forever. So I can stockpile as much of it as I want. And it's not exceptionally expensive at 25 pound bag per year. I can easily, in less than a paycheck, right, stockpile enough to last the rest of my life. So it's a very good prepper oriented system, I feel, for that reason. And if I ever do run out of fertilizer, 
Well, guess what? The guy that was trying to use all these natural materials and getting his uh, wood chips and all that stuff, and now he's run out and he's in trouble and he can't get stuff and his plants aren't growing. That guy died 10 years ago, and I just ran out of my fertilizer, so I'm 10 years ahead of him, and now I can start using more traditional methods if I have to. So I think it, it's a very good fit with prepping. Um, the other thing is, you know, there's all these trace elements. You know, this is that Growing Your Greens guy is all about like, oh, we're going to put this dust and that dust and this in here and mix some of that in there. Have you ever seen the amount of work that he goes through to get his garden ready? It's insane. It's expensive, right? Um, I would have no desire to go through what he goes through to get plants. I have a real job, and I have to do that job to make a living. I can't spend all my time growing plants. So... Midlighter is very time efficient. You get a large reward for the small amount of time that you have to put into it. Um, but the truth is, is that if there's trace elements in the soil that plants really do need or makes the food a little bit healthier, they get it from the soil. If you Even if you're growing in sand and sawdust, the roots still go down under the box into the real soil. So they can still get them. And I grow mine in soil. So there's no reason to worry about that. Okay. And the, the, the last one here is just that mid lighter is just too much work. Have you seen all that? I mean, I had this impression because I first found out about mid lighter watching LDS's uh, videos, LDS preppers videos on his solar. And that's the first thing I was like, man, that guy's crazy. Look at all that work that he's done to grow something, you know, and he's trying to grow in sand and sawdust. And then I saw a couple more and I'm like, Wow, that's a lot of tomatoes. That looks really expensive. You know, and then that was a spell. It's really a lot of work. Well, it is when you first set up your garden bed. There's a couple, uh, you know, for an average, normal, healthy person, probably like LDS Prepper is, it's probably a couple days worth of work to build a, a garden bed. For a fat dude like me that smokes too much, it's a couple weeks of work. Okay? Um, but once it's done maintaining it from that point out is a very easy process every year very few weeds to deal with because you're putting the plants close together getting strong plants that get off take off and grow fast so the weeds don't have a chance to get established um and you're you just have to you know turn it over at the beginning of every year with some pre-plant and put your plants in and, and you're done so it's a very there is some work involved as there is with any garden, but it seems like I used to do a whole lot more work in the spring. And at the end, I had spent hundreds of dollars. I had bought all this stuff and put it in my soil and hauled it back and tilled it in. And I spent the whole time trying to keep the weeds under control. And at the end of the year, I got two big red tomatoes and three tiny bell peppers for all my work. Right? Say, so I should have just went to the grocery store. <laughs> when I did mint lighter last year, I just did it on some of my existing plants that I put in the ground. Most of them were plants that I got for free from my in-laws. And I just had more tomatoes than I could can give away. You know, I had to throw some away at the end of the year. Green, we had, we still got green tomato relish and pasta sauces. Uh, tons and tons of peppers. Just lots of peppers. Uh, I still got bags of peppers frozen. And, um, and then the corn grew really well until it got blown over in a windstorm and then I didn't get as big of a harvest out of that because it got destroyed. Um, but I was just like, you know, I would give it a weekly feeding and my plants would be like, Rrr. and you know, the difference is I used to have a bell pepper plant and I get one or two small bell peppers off of it. Now I have a bell pepper plant. It grows really big to like the size of a small little tree and it has a hundred big juicy bell peppers hanging off of it. Because the plant's getting exactly what it needs. There's something we in mid lighter we call hidden hunger. And a plant can look 100% healthy, but it's still not producing like it can produce. It looks healthy. It doesn't look deficient. But it doesn't have everything it needs to produce as much as it would like to. So it's only growing a few and trying to make those few pieces of fruit as healthy as possible. Because plants like sex. They're all about the sex and they're all about the reproduction. 
So they're trying to make seeds so that maybe their children will have more more, more nutrients in the future, right? Um, so when they have everything they need and there's plenty there and they can grow more, they want to grow more because they want to have babies, right? They're, you know, it's like the, the Duggar pepper plant. It just wants to make babies, right? So, um, that's important to know. There's a big difference. A lot of times people think they have a healthy garden. They think they have healthy plants, but they're not getting the production they could because the plants aren't getting everything they need. Another thing I'll say about fertilizer gardening is when you use, uh, or not fertilizer, like manure, or in, even if you're tilling in some traditional NPK, um, if you're not adding those fertilizers throughout the growing process, you'll find, I always found that my plants would really do good that first month or two. And then when they when they started producing fruit, when which is when they really need the nutrients the most, the fertilizer, that manure was expended, right? And that was a big problem. And so by adding it a little at a time throughout the season, the plant's getting everything it needs exactly when it needs it. Um, you can't go through and retill some more manure into your soil without tearing up their plants partway through the season. So they're running out of what they need exactly when they need it the most. Um, and another thing I want to say as far as the mid ladder gardening is just like not natural. Um, I heard this a lot from Growing Greens. I want to do things as close as they are in nature. I want to be as close to nature as possible. Gardening is not natural. Okay, if you go out in nature, you know, you might find a tomato plant growing wild in nature. You might walk another two miles and find some carrots growing wild in nature. You might walk another five miles and you'll find a patch of something else growing wild in nature. Nature doesn't take plants, put them close together in little rows in a backyard. Okay, so gardening itself is inherently unnatural. You're, you're not being like nature as soon as you try to grow it in a garden in nice, neat rows. Because nature puts a little bit of different plants all over the place with a lot of covered plants in between. And, and in nature, you know, a bean might be growing here where beans produce a lot of nitrogen, which might help something else to grow with the bean. But you might not see another bean for another two miles or another ten miles. Okay, so... Gardening is inherently unnatural, so if you're going to garden, you're, you need to do something artificial to get the plants what they need when they need it that they would normally have in nature because of what is growing around them. And that stuff isn't growing around your plants. So I guess that's really all I have to say. Um, you know, I'll just show you a few pictures here real quick of some Mitlider Gardens. Um, that I kind of like, you know, you can see the grow boxes. Um, we use the the watering system to automatically water their plants every day. Um, but you just get these tomatoes, just this tomato after tomato after tomato, just hanging off. Um, you know, this is a soil bed garden. This is kind of like a little double soil bed that this person's built. Two rows here, okay. Not using sand and sawdust, and it'll work just fine. Um, this is Jim Kennard, who's kind of in charge of the whole grow food thing, growfood.com thing. This is one of his gardens. I think this is his one he had when he was in Alabama. Um, you see his, everything grows up the strings. Um, uh, this is, uh, this might be, this might be LDS Preppers. Looks kind of like his backyard. Um, just plants growing. Um, here's some more grow boxes being done. Here we're not using T-frames, but we're doing some vertical gardening here off of these trellises. Um, here's another soil bed garden, just growing like crazy. Another soil bed garden. So, you don't have to use grow boxes, folks. Soil beds work just fine. The reason I'm doing the grow box is because there's less soil preparation every year. Um, just big... Tons and tons of tomatoes. Um, here's a big, big grow bed garden. So you can see this can be scaled up to a massive scale um, where you're producing a lot of food. Um, there's somebody getting their soil beds ready to go. More tomatoes. 
There's another soil bed garden. Oh, and that's it for the pictures. But I would say go to the Facebook group. I'll put a link down below. And, and LDS Prepper is one of my favorite channels. If you look at my channel page, check his videos out. But the system really does work from everything I've tried with it. And the closer you follow the system, the better results you have. So, um, anyway, folks, I guess that's pretty much it for now. I will have a video up later of some of the updates with me getting my T-frames up. Looks like we got storms rolling in right now, and I have to go uh, to a sing-along thing for my son's preschool. So, I am probably not going to get much done today on the garden. But I'll be back out there tomorrow. My goal is to have it done, both beds, and have plants in the ground by the end of this weekend. This is Tom, your frugal prepper. Remember, everybody, be happy and be frugal and save money wherever you can out there. And plant a, a, a mitt lighter garden or a regular garden and add some mitt lighter weekly feed and see the results for yourself.